This is a Bester 700X ceramic water stone. Now I want to talk about one thing about water stones, which at times can be a bit controversial, which I find amusing because we're talking about sharpening and not something like assisted suicide. But it's whether or not you should flatten water stones. Now Murray Carter is a very strong advocate of not flattening water stones and the reason why is basically you pay for the abrasive, use all the abrasive as a sharpening abrasive, don't grind it off flat, throwing away the high points down your drain. Now that on first pass appears to make perfect sense. Why would you grind away the high spots by flattening throwing it away rather than as he says just take your knife and work the high spots as you see them and flatten out the stone seems perfectly logical the problem is you'll never get it true flat or even close to true flat simply by working your knife uh, on different areas what you'll end up with is a stone that has a bunch of little humps and hollows that you can barely see. Now, what's the problem with that? For me, there's one very critical reason why I flatten stones relatively religiously. I flattened this one after about 5,000 or so passes. And this is the other thing that I find kind of amusing when people say, well, it's just personal preference. Unless you're a hard determinist and basically believe there were essentially complicated toasters, everything is personal preference. That's a meaningless statement. What is it about the thing that would make you prefer it one way or the other is the important thing or meaningful thing to talk about. Now I'll give you an illustration. This is a Spiderco Delica in super blue. I recently reground this to true zero from spine to edge. It was a subject of the challenge from last week. And using the corner of a sharp maker rod, I put a small sharpening notch or choil right here. It takes around 500 passes back and forth to grind in a small, small choil like this. And I did this to give me a very clear transition to stop a little recurve from coming in here, which often happens because this part is near difficult or impossible to sharpen, so you end up with a blunt spot that can start to migrate out and can give you a bit of fits. When I first zero ground this on the Bester, the Bester was at that state just as I was going to lap it, around 5,000 passes in. But I decided to zero to super blue because I wanted to see and measure just how much of a difference those little hollows would make. So when I zero, what I'm talking about is the knife is actually put right flat on the stone, like that. It's not lifted up any angle at all. It's just put flat on the stone and scrubbed. So that makes it one continuous grind from spine to edge. The problem is, your stone, because you're not flattening it, as I said, picks up these little hollows, these little humps. You can't see them, because they're only on the order of about a tenth of a millimeter. But they're enough that when the knife is riding across the stone, those little hollows round the edge up. Not the very apex, but they actually change the curvature as you approach the edge. So if this knife was sharpened fully flat from spine to edge, it would end up about 2 degrees per side. When I finished it, it actually ended up around 6 degrees per side at the very edge. Now, you might say, well, that's probably a good idea, because 2 degrees per side might be a bit too fragile at the edge. But that's a decision I want to control, not have the stone make it randomly for me based on the hollows that are in it. And an increase of four degrees per side 
while on this knife might be perfectly functional on another knife might be quite problematic so this is a knife from Collie Harris this is in his testing steel which still hasn't been revealed yet much thicker stock also has a continuous grind but because the stock is of course much much thicker blades of similar width the angle is increased much more so down by the edge if this was zero from spine to edge the edge would be somewhere around 9 to 11 degrees per side but if I add on 4 to 5 degrees because of those little humps and hollows in the stone now all of a sudden I have an edge that could be 15, 16, maybe even 17 degrees per side I don't sharpen axes at 17 degrees per side generally so that's why those little humps and hollows in the stone even though you might think they're having very much of an influence will produce an increase in curvature at the very edge and you can't control that because it's just random from the amount of wear that's in the stone so the closer you keep your stone to true flat the closer it will apply the angle that you think you are applying when you sharpen on them now the second consequence this has when you're using water stones especially when you combine them with other stones and this is what really tends to confuse and frustrate a lot of people so they have a stone like this and the stone is slightly warm with these little humps and hollows and they finished watching Murray Carter's video and he's talking about using the different spots on the stone so they're doing all that and the stone looks flat to them but they haven't actually flattened it so they take the knife like this and they put the knife at whatever angle they're sharpening say 15 degrees per side and they're sharpening at it but again those little humps and hollows in the stone are going to increase that angle so they think they're sharpening at 15 degrees per side on this then they put this stone away and they take out another stone which could be a diamond plate or a ceramic plate or even a much harder water stone now they go to sharpen on that well that's very close to true flat and it doesn't have all those humps and hollows in it so now this edge which they thought was 15 degrees per side but this stone with the humps and hollows actually makes it 18 degrees per side when they go to the very fine very hard stone and try to sharpen at 15 degrees per side nothing happens because they don't have a 15 degree bevel they have an 18 or 19 degree bevel because of the little humps and hollows in the stone so they get very frustrated with finer stones and people often make the wrong conclusions and they'll say well wow you know this water stone did a great job really brought up the bevel very fast I could feel a burr if they're burr sharpening blade easily slices paper and then they go to uh, spider coast ceramic and it does nothing they say well they're junk you can't even sharpen on them didn't even do anything to improve the edge maybe even dulled it and the reason it dulled it is because then they start putting more force on it try to change the angle around try to do something strange to make it happen which damages the edge then they go back to the water stone picks it up again to show you just how much of an influence it makes this by the way is just rust I perma soak these stones I don't flush them or whatever after I use them uh, so the very next time this is dry now of course because I got it outside and these stones are quite poor so they dry quite rapidly uh, as soon as I put this back in water and as soon as I first go to use it all this comes right off and this is a shaping stone not really a sharpening stone so I'm not really worried about uh, contamination I don't use this to put on the final edge bevel so as I said the first time I zeroed this it produced that slight curvature next to the edge I then use it, did some cardboard cutting, and it's doing relatively well uh, for edge retention on abrasive material in general. I flattened the stone. Then I went back to sharpen it again. Now it should have took maybe 50 to 75 passes per side to sharpen. It didn't because, again, the stone is flat now. It had all those little hollows in it the first time I shaped it. Now it's flat. So now when I lay the knife on the stone, it actually is grinding flat, it is grinding at that 2 degrees per side, and I ended up having to take off that 6 degree per side curvature next to the edge, and that took over 500 passes. Now I knew that was going to happen, 
because I flattened the stone. But just imagine, again, someone who doesn't understand what's going on or tries to use that, you know, work around the stone type method and switching stones. They go from the bester, move up to, say, a thousand grit stone that's relatively new, and they want to try to even out the scratches, and it's doing nothing next to the edge. They're scrubbing and scrubbing and scrubbing and scrubbing, and nothing is happening. Because again, the bester sharpened at around six degrees per side, even when they put the knife right on it, when they go to the harder stone, it doesn't have all these little humps and hollows in it. So now it reduces the angle and it's doing absolutely nothing. Now, if you are aware that this is going on, you can compensate for it. And all you do, of course, is when you go to the harder stone, you lift up the knife to get that increase in angle back assuming of course you want it and since you know that the stone with all the little humps and hollows is going to increase the edge angle you sharpen at a lower edge angle than what you want to end up with to get you there but it's a bit of guesswork because you don't know exactly the angle that you're going to end up with from all these little humps and hollows it just gets larger and larger as they get deeper and deeper so that's one of the reasons why, for me, I get rid of that, flatten the stone after every 5,000 or so passes. If I do that, it keeps the curvature down to at most about one, one and a half degrees increase per side, which I can live with. But if I let it get out of flat, even if I don't flatten it for around, say, 10 or 15,000 passes per side, way too much hollow, I can end up with easy, anywhere between three to five degrees extra per side, which to me is way too much variation in edge angle, and I don't want it. If I want to sharpen a knife at 10 degrees per side, I want it at 10. I don't want it at 15 or 16 and some kind of random edge increment. In regards to this stone, you can see it has quite a lot of life left into it. This has been flattened seven times now. All but one of those times was after 5,000 passes per side. One of them was after 10,000 passes per side. So it's had 40,000 passes per side or 80,000 sharpening passes on it already and it still has quite a lot of uh, life left into it. I would say conservatively uh, it has about four times the amount of sharpening life left into it has already been done. So you're looking at somewhere around half a million passes to use up this stone, even with relatively aggressive lapping. So for me, for the price of this stone, for it to be able to last half a million sharpening passes, I'm not that concerned with using it up with flattening. To be clear though, once your stone starts getting relatively thin, you are going to have to mount a base plate to the back, otherwise the stone will crack. Once this got under, or even started to approach, half thickness, I'd mount like a Lexan plate or something to the back of this, just for structure and support, otherwise there's way too much chance it would crack off when you're using it. So that's the reason why I prefer flattening stones.